But if you go back and you look at his and followed him in the in the past, he hadn't failed at anything he's done. So you know, yeah. let's let's see the you know the what what do they say the the proofs in the pudding. So yeah, and uh, it is you know, and that's something that I said pudding. on the, on that I said that on the video too. It was like you know, yeah. I don't know where all this is coming from. You know, I mean, I know there's a couple of creators out there that they kind of get off on just kind of busting chops and and just trolling, you know, and not really having a whole lot of substance to it. And I'm not going to say any names, but we know who we're talking about. Um, and yeah, well, Jimmy, and you know what? I don't know where you're at on that. If I listen, if if you can tell me a reason why you feel that is, then I'll yeah. listen to you. Um, you know, the one thing I'll say is that you can say whatever you want. The guy's definitely presenting a problem for your uh for everybody i think and particularly for the pac-12 right away we've talked about this a little bit before uh you know th this is a guy who came in and he immediately he had already gotten the number one cornerback and recruit period in the country a year ago he turns around and gets the number one cornerback in the country this year and uh, not to mention the fifth ranked transfer portal class that there is so i mean he's definitely well, going to be an issue i don't understand where Welcome back to the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Watkins. And if you love college football, you're definitely in the right place. So before you forget, smash that red subscriber button. Like our videos and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss one moment of the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast. We'd like to welcome back to the show, the coach, Mr. Philip Royball. Coach, we missed you last week. How's everything going? It's going good. It's just crazy busy in the in the business side of the equation. But you know, I hated missing because college football is incredible. But my grandson's taking up a little bit of that time too with his uh, his hooping abilities. Uh, well, you, you definitely have to make sure that you <laughs> take care of the grandkids first. You know, college hey, football come later. No big deal. Hey, he's about he, he's about he, he's about four eight tall and about four eight wide. <laughs> and, he, and he scored five points last night. <laughs> hey, man, that's big. That's big time, man. Ooh. I know you guys have been having some coaching issues, so that's all right. Coach, you're going to yeah. get get out there and, and uh, get your basketball on before too long. Well, that's that's going to happen again next year. I, I have, I've already made up my mind I'm going to coach those kids in, in basketball too. So, Heck yeah. football Heck and basketball, yeah. we'll coach them up. That's awesome. Well, Folks, please don't forget all the ways that you can help us make sure that we're able to continue bringing you great content week after week. Donate with that Super Chat feature if you're watching us on YouTube. You can send us cash tips via Cash App or Venmo. And you can always buy podcast merchandise. Right there below the coach is our website uh, for that. And uh, you can always get your favorite team gear from Fanatics by using the one just above my head. Uh, and getting up to 65% off everything in the store just for using the link. Um, thanks again to everybody who's tuning into the show. I'm so appreciative of our audience, and I especially wanted to uh, welcome all of our new subscribers that we've gotten over the weekend uh, who may have stopped in tonight um, from a new fan base, from that fan base of Coach Prime's there in Colorado that is just uh, super excited about, about the coach taking over there in Boulder. It, uh, I'm just kind of overwhelmed by the, by the response to the video that we did the other day, coach. It, uh, you know, I yeah. talked a lot about the recruiting wins that he kind of had out there on the trail. Yeah. You know, he, he was about, th uh, well, 40 places better than they were a year ago. So um, one of those things, you know, um, you know, Jason, there, lots, of just, controversy. lots of controversy on Coach Prime right now. 
You know, you got which is weird. Fifty percent of them that love him, and fifty percent of them think he's thinks he's fake. But if you go back and you look at his and followed him in the in the past, he hadn't failed at anything he's done. So you know, yeah. let's let's see the you know the what what do they say the the proofs in the pudding. So yeah, and uh, it is you know, and that's something that I said pudding. on the, on that I said that on the video too. It was like you know, yeah. I don't know where all this is coming from. You know, I mean, I know there's a couple of creators out there that they kind of get off on just kind of busting chops and and just trolling, you know, and not really having a whole lot of substance to it. And I'm not going to say any names, but we know who we're talking about. Um, and yeah, well, Jimmy, and you know what? I don't know where you're at on that. If I listen, if if you can tell me a reason why you feel that is, then I'll yeah. listen to you. Um, you know, the one thing I'll say is that you can say whatever you want. The guy's definitely presenting a problem for your uh for everybody i think and particularly for the pac-12 right away we've talked about this a little bit before uh you know th this is a guy who came in and he immediately he had already gotten the number one cornerback and recruit period in the country a year ago he turns around and gets the number one cornerback in the country this year and uh, not to mention the fifth ranked transfer portal class that there is so i mean he's definitely well, going to be an issue i don't understand where everybody's at coming out coming from from this whole deal i the jackson state deal i think there's two sides to that that not everybody even wants to talk about first off and and i think a lot of that has to do with their uh with their administration and some of the things that were going on out there now i'm not going to sit here and just throw jackson state under the bus either because i don't know about all that but what right. i will say is that he left that program better than he found it period so yeah. you, you know you can you can bust on him a little bit for not winning um, well, you know, and, and let me say this, Jason, for I not mean, winning the championship game. If you want to, if you want to give it, if you want to really go crazy, you could do that. But right. I mean, dude, the guy lost two games in the last two years. So I don't know. Well, and, and Jason, let me add to that is, is, you know, I just mentioned the proofs in the pudding and, and we get comments like he's fake, he's those things, but you know what, Let, let's talk about the proof in the pudding in recruiting. Cause that's where we are right now. You tell me that the kids he brought into Colorado have been coming there in the last five years. The answer <laughs> the is not only years. no, but it's hell no. Right. They have not been recruiting that kind of athletes. So at this point, if he's fake, I'm telling you, he's he's not shown that. He's in really recruiting. good at it. He's so really good at it. Becomes the season, and mm. and then we'll see if he's fake in the season. But I'm going to tell you. Listen, yeah. I, I, I coached I, I coached a kid at Midwestern State University that that coached with Prime in the Dallas Metroplex in the high school, mm -hmm. and and I know this kid well. And he said, Coach, he is the real deal. And you already talked about this, Jason. He's doing some other things other than for the players. He's doing some incredible things for his coaches, and that's another point. I want to bring that up a little bit too. Some incredible, incredible coaches. Yeah, bringing in incredible coaches. First off, I mean, when you start looking at that one, I mean, he goes in and he gets, uh, obviously, oh man, you've got Sean Lewis, who was the head coach at Kent State a year ago. He's one of the most respected coaches uh, offensively in the country. Um, it's the guy that I know Shadur, his son, the quarterback, wanted to play for. Um, and, and learn from, which, I mean, and Shador is already fantastic as it is. Uh, but then you've got a guy, and then he goes out and he gets the defensive backs coach from Alabama who likely would probably be the defensive coordinator right now had he not taken this job already yeah. before they got rid of their other guy. Um, and then, you know, and I mean, and we're talking about a guy who's been, he was a defensive coordinator at Florida State. He was also, uh, Kelly was his name, right? Um, Yes, I've got it. Yeah, yeah. So he was defensive coordinator at Florida State when they won the national championship with Jimbo. He also had uh, he's been everything from a defensive backs coach to a safety coach to a corner coach to the defensive coordinator. And he's one of the best recruiters in the country. Recruits Florida amazingly. I mean, this is uh, you can no matter whatever 
people may think. And some people, and Jimmy, like you said, he talked smack about Oklahoma back when he was at Florida State. Well, that's probably because we're getting ready to play him in the Orange Bowl. And that's kind of what he did. Um, and I don't even necessarily have a problem with that. I, I get it that, you know, it can rub people the wrong way when you're on that other team. I mean, you think about Baker Mayfield. You think Ohio State fans love him? No. <laughs> you know? He played in the flag. Baker. I, yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't. I, I a lot of people don't because he'll he will <laughs> listen. He will the guy will kind of rub rub some people the wrong way with some of the things that he says. That being said, yeah, like James said here, and and I appreciate this comment here. That people don't seem to realize how much of a positive attitude will affect things uh, in that locker room. Um, yep, and he does. He's He's all about God, and and I know that a lot of that rubs people the wrong way too. Particularly the further west you get, the less about God people are, you know. And so, and and I've you always kind of said that Colorado is almost a little bit like you know California East in some ways. So there's a lot of that. But what I'll tell you yeah. is, is that I I don't see anything negative here so far, and. I, I tell you, the what, fact you, is, the video was just about he's winning now. They've already won for getting him. They got their first five star yeah. recruit in 15 years. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's That's what it's, I'm saying. The proof's in the pudding, and and he's he's won the recruiting battle. But one of the things that I've heard a lot of people talk about is, what did you see the video where Coach Prime came in and he he dropped the bombshell on his players? Yeah. Well, you know what, guys. This is a business, whether people like it or not. College football is a, is a big time money business, and yeah. you know what? Bottom line is, and I've sat in those chairs and and been on those sidelines. And you know what? The... At the end of the day, if you don't produce, your butt needs to be gone. And and that's you know that sounds really hard. They're going to fire the coaches. They're going to fire the coaches if they don't produce. I tell you what, I'd rather fire the player than have me fired. I'm gonna play the best. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, and, it is and what he it didn't is. Have and the best, and and he that's did. why they were getting their butts kicked. Yeah, man, and you know, for I remember, well, you know, I was talking a little bit about today, and again, as I said, we got like there was over ten thousand views on that video. Most a, a very overwhelmingly positive response to it. There was some negativity in there coming from some of the haters, but that's fine. Um, that's kind of who the video was for was for the haters, but I mean, we got over a hundred new subscribers. We got, I mean, obviously this is a fan base that is like really been, uh, they're starving for content about their team to be, to be able to like be happy about their team moving forward, you know, to have some, something to look forward to as Oklahoma fans. And even you as a Notre Dame fan, we're used to having something to look forward to yeah. year after year, you know, um, but it's it's something that's you know it's been a while it's been a yeah. while around around Boulder so um, hey, welcome again I'll, guys welcome to the show if if you're here with us uh, we're we're happy to have you on board we will continue to bring uh, some more of that kind of content your way uh, and you also have the Big Twelve is definitely if they go ahead and get this whole thing done with Oklahoma and Texas they could be making moves and getting this thing over with and you would think that that's what they want to kind of focus in on because if you look at I wouldn't care anything about trying to go get um, Washington or Oregon. I wouldn't care a thing about that. I would I would go get those schools. Colorado is a Big Twelve school, if you ask me. They always were. I would I would focus there first because of, and not only that, the prime factor would be huge in that, right? Just the coach prime factor would be huge on that. Arizona State has one of the best up and coming coaches in the country in Kenny Dillingham as well. Um, that dude is unbelievable. Um, I mean, he made Bo Nix look like he was a stud, right? I mean, that dude couldn't, you know, he was pissing down both legs at Auburn, and he looked great at Oregon last year. Um, and then, of course, and you've got a – what's the guy's name that's at Arizona? I keep forgetting his name for whatever reason. But he's a, he's a young, up-and-coming, good coach as well at Arizona. That's another good one there. And then, of course, you've got Kyle Whittingham, who, for my money, is one of the top two or three coaches in the country, period. He's certainly the best coach in the Pac-12 right now, you know, and he just wins with what he gets. And they're not getting, you know, for everybody that thinks that Mike Gundy's such a great gets it out of the lowest level guys and blah, 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 blah. He ain't got shit on Kyle Whittingham, right? <clears throat> you know, and that's just bottom line. So, um, yeah. Yeah. 
and that's where I'm at. I, if that would be my focus, if I'm the Big 12, is survival, and not being relegated to a G5 school or a G5 program or conference. Like what? It, and that's what I feel like it is. You know, once these two blue bloods leave, what do you got left? Conversation, coach. Hey, man, it might be. It might be. Coach, where would you be as far as, I mean, do you feel like they should be, uh, to be, I would be focused in on those four that I was saying. You know, you've got oh, I agree with four you. big-time programs right there that immediately fit geographically and everything else. Plus, the basketball in the conference would even get better, which better. the Big 12 is, they're the best, best basketball conference there is now. They're, they're pretty yeah. good. I mean, I, I, yeah, they're, they're probably the best. Uh, they're better that, than the ACC at this point, which is yeah, wild yeah, to I, say. I, that, I would agree but. with that, but but yeah, it, it, they would improve both both football and basketball tremendously. I agree. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Well, Arizona continues to be a blue blood, and then Arizona State with Bobby Hurley. They, I mean, they've they've kind of done their thing as far as that goes. That's that's a big move. Now, yeah, I'm telling you, I think, but it's I not think, even about. It's still going to be about football. It's always sure, about football. Sure. Yeah, you know? and and I think the the blueprint kind of fits those schools in that conference. I I, right. I, I think they're perfect, uh, especially at this point. They they really become perfect. Well, and you look at at Coach Prime being. I mean, he's a Dallas guy. You know, you tell me yeah. he wouldn't be able to recruit the hell out of Dallas. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, that that wouldn't be perfect for him. And they're playing okay. most of their games within the within the whole within area that, of yes. Texas. That's a great point, Jason. That's a great point. You know, if if I'm Coach Prime, I'm pushing for that. Like, get us out of here. You know, we and let's go. Because again, I don't once you and and the thing is, is like, and this is something Bryce used to say a lot, was that I don't want to hear about USC and UCLA. They haven't been relevant and worth the crap in a long time. You know, and I agree with him to an extent. They do, but there is pull there, right? And, right. Uh, hey, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Um, I agree with him a lot on that because of the fact that they hadn't done anything in so long. The truth of it is, though, that right now they've got the defending Heisman winner. They've got a guy that very well could win the Heisman and Dante Moore at any point of his career, guaranteed. I, that guy is unbelievable good. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, um, you know, and then you've got uh, they're they're gonna be making this money going to the Big Ten too. I still feel like no matter what they're saying in the Big Ten right now, they're coming back for some of your schools. <clears throat> they <throat> are, they are. And so, to me, if I would be preemptive if I if I'm Colorado and Arizona, and I think the Arizona schools are ready. You know, I think that they're they're waiting it's for their be. opportunity. Yeah, it, and I would, I would at least add four. I would, I would even if you could go ahead and and send the death blow and grab San Diego State and Gonzaga too, because they were talking about Gonzaga for basketball. Yeah. Do it, you know, get it over with. But you with know, Utah, it, it, you then you get the, the Utah, Jason, you get you the Holy this War. Earlier, Let, yes. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go, but go, you on, go. This earlier about San Diego State. San Diego State can play some football, brother. Shit, yeah, they can. I mean, I, I've been really, really impressed. Uh, and you know that 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 I didn't think much of Rocky, man, until he got out there. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and that's what I was just fixing to say. Rocky Long went out there and he turned that sucker around. He did. And and since then they have been they played pretty good football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I feel like this they're gonna go to the big two. I, th I think they are. And, and here's the reason why I think that it's not because that I think <laughs> that they're really clamoring ne necessarily to have that market out there. I mean, it's a decent sized market for that area or whatever. Um, what I would tell you is Nike doesn't hurt anybody's feelings, but what it amounts to is USC wants and, and UCLA, they're going to want some teams that they don't have to travel halfway across the country to play. Okay every you know if they in and, and yeah. have that oh yeah so um the uh i feel like that's that's the biggest part of that the other thing is they're really making a push for notre dame as well if you get notre dame you got to go get stanford which means that you're going to get cal right uh, notre dame wants to play the guys that they want to play they're going to play their 
their rivals every year. This is why they stay independent. But if you're going to put them in a conference, you better have the rest of those conference teams that uh, in their conference that they can continue to play them. Um, John Tate, thanks a lot, man. I, uh, yeah, that's kind, John Tate. Yeah, man. Hey, hey thank you very you much. I appreciate that. <laughs> We do talk a lot of crap. <laughs> we do we talk a lot of fun. crap. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and you but know yeah, what? I've... Hey, let me say something, John Tate, too. Hey, as you're on here, you, the more you're on here, you'll, un, you'll understand. We have a great audience, man. They, they're we do. very knowledgeable of the game and, and what's going on. And, uh, and so that's another thing that makes this show incredible is you guys is the audience are incredible with your knowledge, man. I'll tell you what. And that's one thing that when it comes to the OU creators and stuff, um, these guys, I mean, man, there's, there's a handful of these dudes that just, they get it. And you know, you really, you think about the Lone Star dudes, even, you know, I, they're young kids, but they, I mean, they're on it. They are on it. And uh, I, this is what I love about it is the fact that we can do this, you know, and I've been enjoying this, you know, John Tate was something that we were talking about early in the show was, was a lot about Colorado. And uh, we're going to get into a little more about them here in a second. Anyway, uh, man, if you're not paying attention to Colorado football right now, like you got your head in the sand and you may be a hater, which I could see people being haters too. I could see that. But I also think that, I mean, this is good for college football. This isn't bad for college football. There's no way that it's bad for college football. Um, it may be bad for your, for your favorite team, uh, but it could be, and it, depending on who it is, but it's, you know, that's neither here nor there. But I think no matter what, he was going somewhere and there was, it, it, look, when he was pulling the number one recruit in the country yeah. to go to an HBCU instead of Florida State, instead of Alabama, any of these other places, you know, Saban was pissed about it. I mean, he chucked, he's. Chuck Coach Prime right under that bus that he threw Jimbo under last year yeah, sure. over it, you know. So, uh, you know, he was – you knew this was coming, and I'm glad it was. Something I wanted to – we were talking about everything else he's doing. I was blown away yesterday by – I caught a video. It just happened to pop up on the feed, and they had just <laughs> put it out. He had a guy that – a wealth-building manager, like a, a, a financial advisor dude, like for the rich – that was on there talking to some of his guys about how they could keep from paying so much taxes and how they could build wealth. He had a workshop for all of his coaches. I have, I've never even heard of coaches doing this coach. I mean, no, no. I, I mean, that's not, that's not something you usually see. Uh, and, and again, that's why earlier in the show, we were talking about prime. He, you know, he cares about people. And like I, like I told y'all earlier is, I coached a, a player, now a coach that uh, coached with Prime, and, yeah. and he had nothing but great things to say about him, very positive things. And and the the reason was it's what his it's coaches were saying on there. Things. Yes, it's those kinds of things that he does that he really cares for the players, he cares for for his coaches and their families, and so it's just to him, it's more than just football. It's Sure. It's his life. And then you mentioned earlier, you know, he, he's a strong believer in Christ. And, and mm -hmm. uh, again, I know that steps on some people's toes, uh, but, mm -hmm. but, you know, I don't care. I, I love it. I don't, I, even, I think I don't it's, either. It's incredible. And, and he's got an opportunity to really change the game in college football sure. as a whole. I mean, not just right. in Colorado, but, and Jason, I, I, I'm going to say this. I, I don't, because I know we already talked about this a little bit, but I, 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 I'm we talking about whatever here. I don't want to start a betting deal, but I, I'm taking bets that he will at least double the wins uh, from last season. Uh, and that won't be too dang hard. That's it's two. Too, That's win two wins. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm taking bets. <laughs> Good luck, man. Uh, All right. And, and, I'll tell you what, and Sean, what you're saying, and I, I, here's what I would say to this. They still have a way to go. Let's see how their season goes. I, I agree with this. Yeah. Now, what I would tell you is, what was USC the year before Lincoln got there? What were they? Uh, four and four and seven or three and nine, three, three and eight, something like that. Yeah. Here's the deal. 
he, there's not a big difference there. And what did he do? The same thing that Coach Prime did. Coach Prime brought in 43 players. Basically half of your roster. He brought in 43 players between the transfer portal and this number 21 ranked recruiting class that he brought in. The guys that he brought in are ready to play now. His quarterback, I'm not going to say that Shador is Caleb Williams. He's not that far off. Close. He's Pretty not close. that far off. And I, I realize that he played in FCS. I'm, don't, don't get it twisted. I understand that it's not the same. What I'll tell you is he also did not play with the same level of guys that he's going to get here, first off, because they went out and they've gotten some weapons, right? Yep. And he didn't have Sean Lewis as his offensive coordinator either. I'm going to tell you, this. I see them seven games as their – it's their floor for me. I think they win seven. I think that they probably win – Um. I think they probably went closer to nine. You know, I think they I could easily see them winning nine games. Yeah. I, and, I, and the other reason for it, it's not even just because of the fact of what they brought in there. Um, yeah, man. That, yeah, he's already taken care of his salary. Shoot. Um, <laughs> what I would say is that the big thing is, is that remember what well, we talked about this before, half of that conference was dog was just dog crap. Right. You had yeah. nine wins teams, and then like Utah ended up winning ten, and I want to say that Washington ended up with ten wins after they beat after they beat Texas. Uh, you had four or five teams that were right around eight, nine, ten wins, and then the rest of them had like two. Yeah, exactly. right. So it's it's not like there's a you have to step over a bunch of teams to get to the top, right? And and we both we all know what that they'll automatically have guaranteed they'll be better than USC is going to be on defense. So he doesn't necessarily Shador doesn't have to be better than Caleb Williams. He just has to be good enough that if they can make a couple of stops, they win. There's a win there. Um, well, I think they and I'm telling you, I've had people saying that they think that they might get beat by TCU because TCU is going to be pissed off about the about the natty. I got to tell you, I feel like TCU is about to be hung over from the natty. I don't think – and it may be a season-long hangover. I wouldn't be surprised to see them end up with four or five wins. But no, not only – not to mention the fact that they only – they're not bringing anybody back hardly. No, and and and, and I tell you what, we I, – and I've mentioned this before. Uh, you know, I, I, I love the coaches that they're at TCU. I know them well. But mm-hmm. I, they got lucky several times this year. They did. Uh, and, and once you do that a few times, it builds momentum. Right. Uh, Lady Luck was on their side. They, they sure. got there. But but what happened to them in the big game? I mean, I, I think that was a telltale sign. You know, they got throttled. Glass I slipper, love, the glass slipper fell guys. off, man. It fell off and it shattered. Right. <laughs> and, and, and now I, I want to see, and I've said it a million times, what are you going to do this coming season? Mm-hmm. And I – I don't believe. I hope they prove me wrong because I got a got a lot of good friends on that staff, and I hope they prove me wrong. But I don't think so. Right. You know, one thing, Jason, that you were talking about earlier is talking about you know some of those players Prime has brought in uh, to to Colorado. You know, and saying, well, they may not be that level in in some ways, but but you know, I, I go back and I say this. Guys, you you know, go look at the NFL rosters and stuff and see how many of those guys are Division II guys. No, it's everywhere. They played Division One. That you didn't are. know who the hell they were. You had exactly. no idea. And you're a big college football fan. You have no idea. Right? Exactly. And and so, you know, I that one I'm going to kind of uh, – they and again, they may not know them well, but they, they may kick your ass on the field. <laughs> right. Well, and here's the thing. He had a lot of four stars and, and three star guys. And the, and the better part of most rosters are going to be made up by three star players. If you're yeah. not Alabama, you know, yeah. um, and Georgia, you're the, the greatest portion of your roster is probably going to be three stars. You know, um, I do agree with this uh, Stoops yes, fight, I do too. in the trenches. And that's a, that's a good segue, actually. Yeah. Uh, we were going to bring up uh, talking about that a little bit. This is where. 
that now the rubber's going to meet the road a little bit here with Coach Prime and and honestly with Todd Bates because here's the thing with this something that I've been talking about and you know not that any of the folks that come into this show anymore are are among this ilk but I spent way too much damn time on Twitter um, and there's a group of people out there that are of this stupid opinion that Todd Bates doesn't know what he's doing recruiting in the trenches because he's missed out because he missed out on, um, on David Hicks and then Caden McDonald, David Hicks got freaking 10 bags of cash left at his door before he made that decision. There was no two ways around it. He was going to go to A&M. Yep. Um, Caden McDonald is a Georgia kid and they were up against Larry Johnson at Ohio state, who is the godfather of defensive line coaches. And they were up against Georgia and Clemson. He ended up going to Ohio State. He's not even a – he's a Georgia kid. How? When's the last time you got a Georgia kid, you know? I mean, they're out there getting all these other defensive players and all that stuff, but you get these idiots that are saying all this stuff. Now, that being said, it, it's louder than I expected that it would be. But right now, you've got Colorado and Oklahoma engaged in a battle for a five-star defensive lineman – um, in Williams Waneri, yeah, Williams Waneri. Uh, he's at Kansas City product, also. Um, and he actually he went he was teammates with Caden Green. It looks good for Oklahoma to possibly be able to get him, but I mean, again, do you really <laughs> trust that? Do you really trust that if Coach Prime says what he needs to say, that it couldn't happen? Right. Well, and and again, we and we mentioned this earlier in the show. You know what? When was the last time you saw uh, Colorado battling OU for that type of a for play? anything? Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Exactly. Uh, well, and and, they, they and, and, and to be fair, Oklahoma off. hasn't been getting those guys either for a long right. time. Right. You know, it, <laughs> there's not a whole lot of those guys like, yeah. Back in the day, come on, man. Yeah, I, it's been a long time for OU also, okay? They haven't played defense in freaking 10, 12 years. Easy. <laughs> so, anyway. And I loved it. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> bet you did. So, right now, obviously, the big push is for Oklahoma. The big push is to go ahead and get some of these guys. And they've got another five-star defensive lineman in state in David Stone that everybody's just clamoring to get. And he sh should get him. Um, apparently I don't think his parents really want him to stay in state. So there's a possibility that they may not. And we're talking, I mean, Gerald McCoy's trying to recruit him to come to, to Oklahoma and he's, I don't think his parents are going to allow it. And Michigan state is for some reason right in there. Um, this guy is big time. Williams Nwari, Waneri, Waneri uh, is a stud. Just unbelievable player. And, again, he played with Caden Green there in um, Kansas City. Um, and you're also looking at – then you've got Nigel Smith, the third, who I'm pretty sure he looks pretty good for Oklahoma as well. He's going to be a five-star right now. He's a high four. Um, so you're looking at uh, – right now, Oklahoma looks pretty good to get somebody really good uh, in, this, in this cycle, you would think. And it could be that you could hit the jackpot here. Mm -hmm. But – um, by this and and I think that that would be huge for for a guy like you know obviously Todd Bates has been under under fire a little bit and now granted he's under fire by the idiot crew so I'm not too worried about that because I know that coach Venables knows better um good grief but <clears throat> you know he has been under fire that being said how big a thing would it be this is if you our coach prime and and his staff for that matter. And you're out there and you go up against one of the dudes that gets it done in the trenches everywhere he's been that for the end. I mean, coach Bates has never had a guy that wasn't an all conference player at some point that he's coached. Right. No. If you go up against these guys and you, and you get them, that is a huge turn in that right direction. And what I would tell you about the trenches is this stoops, uh, Stoops defies. <laughs> I like that name. Um, <laughs> what I would say is this, the difference for the big guys in the trenches is between winning the natty 
and maybe getting to the playoff or winning conference championships. Yeah. It's not necessarily a difference between being dumpster fire and being good. You know what I mean? There's you, you definitely need to be decent, but right. I mean, Lincoln Riley has proven that you don't have to have a great defense to win games, you right. know? Right. So, well, and I think, I think who, who was it that brought up uh, Tulane? Uh, uh, Kim. That was Kim. Yeah. Kim. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kim. yeah, yeah. You know, Kim, I went and watched them in the Cotton Bowl uh, whip up on, on uh, the team that I hate. Uh, and I don't even like using their name, to be honest. But, Tebow. <laughs> but I did. I watched that. And I watched, you know, being an old, old high school and college coach, I, I watched the trenches a lot. And, and they weren't the best team on the field that day in the trenches, right? but their athleticism, have been. their athleticism with those guys, they were s- smaller, but right. they, they, they were fiercely competitive Sound. and got after it. So I think you bring up a great point, Kim, uh, talking about that. So, and you know what else I love? I got to say this, Kim, I love women that know their football because my wife is just like you. She knows her football and, uh, Hell, she's probably better coach than I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, I would uh, say she is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, hey, I'll tell you one thing. Miss Christie was there every step of the way and the, the great support. I, I'm so glad that uh, you've been on the show and we've been able to kind of reconnect and stuff with some of that because that was a while back, but it's, uh, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Good days. Yeah, it was. Um Guys, I, I mean, but to me, like, like I said, if if Colorado pulls this off, that would signal something <laughs> very, very significant um, that in which the, you have to take Coach Prime and these Buffaloes very seriously yeah. in the national scene. If he starts pulling guys off like this and you're getting and you get them big in the trenches, you know, he's going to get corners. He's the best one of the best corners to ever play the game, period. Yeah. And maybe the best. So and the corners, it didn't surprise you that he goes out and gets Cormani McLean. It doesn't surprise yeah. you that he gets Travis Hunter, yeah. but it would surprise you if he does this. Right. You know, he has a quarterback for a son that's a stud, so it doesn't surprise you that they go out and get amazing receivers or, you know, skill guys. It's not going to – that's not surprising. And I um, think I, I think Coach Prime can coach him up a little bit at corner too, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and that's the thing. But when if you're able to do this – then that tells you that this is going to be – listen, man, he's a problem. This dude is a problem. If I'm telling you, you uh, coaches, coaches are not liking this. I promise you they're not. Why would you-